All right. We're now ready to continue the series for Insight Easy Builder Workshops. And again, we are recording this for our YouTube channel. So if you're new to joining the workshop, you're just now coming online with us, uh, please check out the preceding videos to get fully caught up to speed. Because at this point, we're going to be moving a little faster than what we have been doing on the previous ones. So if you do get lost, need extra help, need to understand how the tools work, I highly encourage you to look at the previous videos. All right, this exercise, we're gonna be working with barcode reading and we're gonna be working with OCR analysis. So OCR, optical character recognition. Basically what that means, we're going to be teaching our camera to read. So here we are, our Insight Easy Builder environment. And we have some data left over from our previous job that we need to clear out. So what I'm going to do is go under Get Connected. And I'm going to say New Job. And I'm going to clear that data out. Now the other thing we need to do is get the correct set of images that we need to be working with. So I'm going to come under Setup Image. I'm going to load the images from the PC. I'm going to hit my selection button for which file folder that I want. And the one that I want is this one called Black Demo Plate. And I'm going to say OK. So you notice here, I have my demo plate, which is a laser etched outline of a Cognex camera. And there's various inspections we could be doing with this, but we're going to be focusing just very simply on code reading and OCR analysis to be able to teach the camera on how to read. So here we go. First thing we're going to do with this one in this particular case is we are going to set up a locate tool. So the locate tool is the tool that locks onto the part that all the other tools reference. So as the part moves around, all the other tools move with it. And we're going to be choosing a pattern tool and hit add. And I'm going to choose what represents the lens portion of this camera and say OK. So now I have my pattern tool and we covered this in um, section one of this video series. If you need more help on setting up the locate tool and what a pattern, basic pattern tool is, please refer to that video on our YouTube channel. So right now we have our locate tool. We have a good green crosshair with it. So now we're going to start setting up and doing inspection with it. So we're going to go under the inspect part. And the first thing I want to do is I want to read this 2D matrix code that we have here. So if I come under my tool set, I have a set of tools known as identification tools. If I open up identification tools, I'm going to choose read 2D code and hit add. So now I get a box here that's going to actually read 2D code. So I'm going to place it around my two dimensional code and hit OK. And now you notice I've got a nice green box and this 2D code actually says ABC123. That's literally it as far as reading a 2D code. There's not a lot there. If you are working with barcodes on a regular basis, whether they be 1D or 2D, to do a higher speed, more detailed analysis, grading, print quality results. We can definitely do some of that within the camera environment, but if all you're doing is barcode reading, I would highly recommend to check out any of our video series concerning our data man barcode readers. They're made specifically to fine tune those higher speed, more production rate barcode reading examples. So check that out for today though. This is it. This is all we need to do to be able to read a basic code, just literally dropping the code down. All right, the next thing we want to do is actually perform an OCR analysis. OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. So for Optical Character Recognition, I'm still going to be under the Identification Tools, but I'm going to choose the one that says Read Text OCR Max, and I'm going to hit Add. So I'm going to put this tool around these letters that say ABC123 and I'm gonna hit OK. So it puts the tool in place, and it immediately does a couple things. One is, it has already identified, and I'm going to zoom in on this, 
a red box around each one of these letters. This is referred to as the segmentation. So this tells me that this has already segmented correctly. It has already identified the area that each individual letter takes up. Above each one of those though, it has put a question mark that says, I don't know what this is. So it's identified it as a, it's a character. However, it doesn't know what that character is. So we're going to need to train this character. So if I come under my tab on my right hand side that says training, I can now train the string. So in this case, I'm going to say ABC, one, two, three. And I'm going to hit train all. As Soon as I hit train all, it now actually puts up here ABC, one, two, three. You'll also notice it starts to build a library. It has one instance of a number one. It has one instance of a number two, one instance of a number three. If, as I add characters to it, as my characters vary, then I can add additional versions of what each letter looks like. To build a robust OCR library using OCR Max, you're going to wind up with eight to 10 variations of each character or number in order to get the majority of the natural variants that you'll have on the printers and equipment that you have on the manufacturing floor. So it does take a little bit of time to get an OCR tool running correctly and up to speed, just to get all those variations in place. So I'm gonna zoom back out full screen. And you notice we have our 2D tool, we have our OCR tool, and I'm gonna cycle through some images. Because of our locate tool, as our part moves, those other tools move with it. We adjust for angles. Ah, but what's happened here? This image is ABC. One, two, three. This image is ABA, one, two, two. That being said, why didn't it fail? That's not what we taught it. Well, here's one of the setting differences. OCR, optical character recognition, is a read-only function, meaning it's going to read what's there. Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It's not making a decision right or wrong. All it's going to do is read. So if I have this on a production line where I'm reading serial numbers to log the serial number in of the part, every serial number is going to be different. There's not a pass fail unless I tell it to compare it to something. But if I'm just reading for log purposes, I'm just reading. There's not a pass fail unless the characters are unreadable. Now, if I want to match this to a database, I want to match the lock code to make sure that the lock code is right, the expiration date on a food or a pharmaceutical product, or I want to match this to a serial number that I'm expecting to have in a station, I need to change this from a read function to a read verify. This now changes the function from OCR, optical character recognition, to OCV, optical character verification. So that optical character verification is what we want to do. So I'm going to say, I want to look for ABC, one, two, three. You'll notice I type that into my match string block down here at the bottom. And you'll notice now my ABA, one, two, two, the second A and the second two are now red. It read them, but red is in R-E-A-D. They're now the color red, R-E-D, indicating they don't match what it's expecting. Those are the characters that are different. If I back up to my previous image, my ABC123 is all green because that is what my match string is. So that being said, ABA122 is failing, ABC123 is passing. So just to prove that we are indeed reading from a library, I'm going to actually come back up here to my very first image, this word pass. If I take this same toolbox and I put it down on the word pass, notice that my A reads, no problem there with the A. My S and my S have red question marks of them. It doesn't know what those characters are. They weren't part of my library. There is no S in the ABC 
one, two, three that we taught it. This is now where I can come down to my button that says train selected. And you'll notice I have a question mark for the P. I have a question mark for the S and the S. So I'm going to type in a P for P, but I'm only going to type in one S. And this is the reason. As soon as I hit train, it now puts it in the library. Because it puts it in the library, it is now reading as an S. It read the second S, even though I'd only taught one version of it. And then I had the letter P in here. Well, the P is yellow. Remember, we're still in read verify mode. The P has a lot of the same pixels as this letter B. It's close. It's more like what it's expecting to be as a B, but not quite. So it shows up as yellow, where the S is just totally different and showed up as red. It was too dissimilar. If I change this back to just a read, then everything comes back up in green and we read correctly. All right, basic example of a OCR, OCV, and 2D code reading example. So we're going to minimize this back out and we're going to be moving on to the next section.